Hello everyone. Today I'm going to introduce you into a fun thing to do with your cards and that is mail art. So you know you spend a lot of time making all these cards and you're doing these wonderful beautiful cards to send someone and then you put them into a plain regular old envelope. Well that's kind of boring. Why not dress up your envelope as well and come up with something creative and a great way to show that hey I'm getting something amazing in the mail as well so it's another way to display your art and another way to, to just really spice up your card making and card stuff so today we're going to go through some techniques and some tips that I have for sending out mail art I've been doing this for a long time I've been making mail art uh, for quite a few years now and it's just a, a great way to to add to your cards so the first thing I'm going to show you is, this is an actual card that I sent to myself and I did it just for demonstration purposes, but there's a few reasons why I showed you this to start off with. The first thing you want to be very mindful of is that when you're making your cards that you have to leave room for certain things of course and you have to follow the guidelines for the postal service as well. So what you're going to always going to see is you're going to need a return address your to address and you're going to have a postage uh, stamp there. So you're always going to want to be very mindful of that you're going to need to leave space for that in your card so that you can actually read that, the postal carriers can actually read that and know that you're always going to have a stamp in there. But if you're kind of going in the mindset that you're going to need those three areas to start with for sure, that when you make your card you're actually going to be leave some space for that. Um, so you don't want to make you know all your design to be in one of those areas so if you're going to stand up a sentiment to a picture or you know any type of embellishment or whatever just be very mindful that those three places for sure are going to need to be smooth and readable uh, to your postal service something you also will be able to see in this card is at the bottom they're going to put a barcode on here uh, most postal areas are always going to put some sort of barcode on there for their machines to scan and so that's another area you're going to want to kind of leave or you know I, I kind of like that idea of that how that looks so you can actually kind of plan for those things to be in there um, so be very aware of that and then this one I don't know if the camera can pick it up but there's actually they put another small barcode on the back now that one's in a really light ink so it really doesn't define that as much but they did put another barcode on the back on there and then of course they're going to cancel the stamp which is really cool it gives it a nice little wave pattern i think that was really neat and it's going to actually give you the postal area that it came from so those are some real basic tips on just the generic part of what the postal service is going to do to your card um, another thing that they're you're going to want to be mindful of is that these cards are going to run through a machine so they're going to have a sorting machine that they're going to run through. So you want to keep your card flat um, so that it's going to run through that machine and be able to be processed for them to put that barcode on there to read your addresses and to be able to get that to your destination. So one of the things that you really want to be careful of is you really don't want to get too crazy with paper layering, embellishments. You don't want to put anything that's going to stick up too large on there. So the last thing you want to do is send out a card and you're going to send it back and you're going to have an edge of something that you embellished on there folded over or it's going to get stuck in the machine and get rejected um, or they're going to get caught up in there and get marred or marked or you know somehow it's going to destroy the artwork that you put on there and so we don't want to do that so you want to make this as easy as possible for the postal service they don't really want to have the headache of having to deal with your card jamming up their machines so just be very mi mindful of that you can do things, you can embellishment, and you can put some fancy stuff on there. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to actually have to take that into the postal service. You're going to have to go up to the postal um, behind the counter and have them hand cancel. If they hand cancel that stamp, it's going to skip the step of running through that machine. Now, it still may run through the machine depending on the, on the card, but that's one way to kind of get past that. I still don't recommend putting too much of an embellishment on there, paper layering. You know, if you're going to put little pearls and things like that, I wouldn't really do that. 
you can you can experiment with it and if you hand cancel it you're more likely to get that through the mail but you do have to be careful of that and very mindful um, so I'm going to move on to some other little bit of card making techniques and show you how to make a few of these cards and uh, one thing I will sh recommend for you is to take a piece of cardstock um, or a postcard or anything and you're going to want to quite often insert that into your card before you start working on it. What you'll find is where these edges of the cards overlap, the paper overlap, you may actually get that to show up depending on your stamp techniques through that card. Um, this gives it a nice flat surface to work on. Now you still have a little bit of an edge uh, where it doesn't reach the paper here all the way inside the card so you can try to cut one real tight if you really are worried about that or just remove it when you're getting closer to the edge of your paper so you can avoid that. But that's one technique also um, that will help if you aren't using any markers um, like on these true blind markers these are amazing really love these markers but they do give a little bit of a bleed through on a thinner paper so if you have that cardstock in between there you're going to eliminate that whole bleed through because you don't really want to be doing a real you know intricate design and coloring it in and then come to flip over your card and you've bled through the marker on the other side so first thing i'm going to show you is a little bit of uh, stenciling on here so I'm going to take in your little blending tool and your blending pad, stick that on there. And I'm going to be working with the Distress Oxides today. Uh, this is the Pumice Stone. Uh, I really like this. as a nice neutral base color to start out with. Um, so I'm going to kind of go in there and I'm going to work up a little ink. And I'm going to go in and just kind of start working a little base color into that just to bring something in on the bottom. It's always good to start off the paper and kind of work your way into that. And on this card, I'm gonna kind of work over the flap. And that's just gonna give it a little of a base color on there to start. And I'm not gonna make the whole card, but I will, uh, show you some of this. So now I've got one of my stencils that I'm going to lay right over the top of that. And we're going to maybe try this peel paint. And I'm going to take a little bit of uh, painter's tape. And I'm not going to do the whole card so I know that I can kind of tape a little bit of the card in there to keep it in place, to keep my stencil in place. And so then I'm going to go back in and work this oops, pen stick, peeled paint into that, a little color on there, and then I'm going to slowly work in some of that over the stencil. Just blend that off so it goes out real subtle. And I'm going to come in, take that up. And see how that gives you that beautiful honeycomb? I love that pattern. It's such a cool pattern to have on there. And then I'm going to layer another pattern on here with another stencil. And I like this dot here. We'll do the little round dots. And again, I'm going to kind of stick that down, hold it in place, and we're going to go in with how about some of the peacock feather. And I use a different pad for each color when I'm going to be working quite a bit. And that just saves a lot of time and I go back in and clean them up afterwards. So I'll bring up a little bit of color on that. And I'm just gonna slowly work in some little dots on there too. And 
And of course you can stamp on here, you can do whatever you want, whatever technique you want. But just to kind of show you some of the fun you can have with these stencils. These stencils are great. I really like them. So as you can see, now I've got three layers on there. And that turned out really nice. And the more you play around with it, the more you can kind of come up with different combinations. So like this one here, and it's got a kind of a happy birthday on there. And I built up so lots of layers of different designs on there, stamped some hearts and things from there on there as well. So that's just kind of one demonstration of how to use stencils on there, building up some layers and using your colors on that. So the next technique I'm going to show you is, again, we're going to be building up some layers and what I want to show you on this card is that, so I've done my front and I want to carry on in the back the same kind of pattern. And when I want to do this, actually, I want to color behind the, the flap of the envelope as well. And that just adds another cool property to when they actually open the card that you actually went underneath the flap. And I'm actually going to do this part here. Now, one thing that I found that's really helpful is I've got my card insert here to help with the design. And what I went through and I did is I made little notes on here of where my colors ended so that I can do this wrap around of this color pattern to know where to end and to help myself guide with what colors I'm gonna have. So now I'm gonna take in there and I'm gonna use my lighter colors first and I'll go back in with my pumice stone. And so I know on my card that my pumice stone is going to end up here. I mean, you can do spend your time folding it back and forth, but it just kind of helps to know already where, where my color is going to end. And so I know that I want the pumice stone to be here so that when I go back in, So that when I actually fold my card over, my blue, my gray is going to match up. And then I can actually carry that through to the top of the flap as well. And now I know on my insert that my mode lawn is my next color that's going to come in close to that. And I've even marked, if you could see that, kind of where my colors go. So now I can go in and pull that mode lawn over here so that it blends. And I can do that same thing with peel paint. And that one just kind of creeps up a little bit in here. So now that when I fold this back over, my colors should line up really close. And you can go back in and kind of work them in together so that they blend real smooth. And they match up better. But that just is a nice little tip to help you. And you already got that paper in there to help guide that through. And so and that helps when you are building that card and keep carrying over those colors and you can do all the way up into here as well. One thing you want to be very careful of, and this is just another thought, is that you're always going to have this, um, I call it lick'em stick'em. It's the, the 
water app um, activated glue it's always going to be on there so if you're getting your card wet you have to be very careful that this doesn't get wet as well because what you're going to end up doing is gluing it sealed to your card now you don't want to do that because again you're going to spend all your time making this card and then you're going to go back to flip it over and then it's stuck one thing you can do is take a wet cloth or your chamois and you can actually pull that glue right off carefully you don't want to over wet it but you can actually pull that glue off of there and then use either double-sided tape or glue or whatever when you actually go to seal the card up um, so that's another way to kind of avoid that that issue but I've had it where it sticks to the table or it sticks to the self your sh to the envelope itself and then you find out later that you've already sealed your envelope and something else we can show you another technique that I've learned over the years is that you can take your card instead of having to worry about wrapping over the colors or being you know careful about how to do that is you can actually open your card up and if you're real careful not to bend your card and not to rip too much of the paper you can take this off now a little ripping is going to rip the glue a little bit is fine but if you're real careful pay attention can actually pull this off Just take your time some are a little more stubborn than others sometimes you can pop them right off without any problem Luckily, most of the time they only put a pretty thin line of glue on there, so it's really easy to take off. Sometimes they fight you a little, though. I feel like that one popped off pretty easy. So now, you can actually take your card and open it all the way up. So you have the entire card to work with. And uh, I probably could have done that a little slower and got a little cleaner, but you get the idea. So now I have the entire surface of the card to work with that I don't have to worry about overlapping. And I just know that when I'm done, I can put it all right back together and it'll fold right up. And you just put a little glue on those edges there and you can put it right back the way it was. So make sure that when you're working with your card, once it's open, that you orient yourself that this is going to be your front so here's your return address your to address here's your stamp and then whenever you're working with that this side's going to be upside down because this is going to be the back of the card so that if you stamp any sentiments you're going to want to make sure that you stamp them this way which is the reverse of this side because you don't want to end up stamping it upside down put your card back together and you're like oh whoops that didn't work like i wanted it to um, so with this, again, it's the same, same kind of principle as before, is that you can come in and work with your colors and build up your layers. Um, I'm just going to go in some spice marmalade and just to make some real light colors here. But you can carry that through to the whole entire envelope. So you can kind of work that color in all the way through and you know it's going to carry through and line up just perfectly because you've already done that. I got a little crease for my hasty separation. So now again once you kind of build up your colors and these Distress Oxides are so nice because you can always, they're very forgiving, you can always go back in and rework them and layer, layer on top of layer. And it's just, they're so fun. Activate it with water, 
can do all kinds of things with that. So like I can take a little squirts of water in there and I can let those dry and get a whole nother effect with that. So now that I've kind of got a base coat on there, and another thing you can do is you can do a little dry embossing on here because that's not going to raise it up too much to get caught in the machines. So then you can actually go in and do some dry embossing on top of that. So it's just another way to add a little style, a little flair, another element of design on your card. So you can go in with your stylus tool, find your edges. So it's a little wet from me putting a little water on there, so you gotta be careful of that. that you don't rip through your paper. You see, you get a little bit of embossed design on there. You can use wet embossing as well. effect that that gives a little three-dimensional shape to your card as well. And you play around with you, you can come up with a design like this. So now I took this whole card apart. I put down some of my distressed oxide directly onto my mat, sprayed that with water, did a little dab dipped with the colors and then I glued this back together after I did some dry embossing I went back in and then embellished a little bit with the uh, the distress oxide on top of that just to accent and really pull out the design on those dry embossing and then I even like these stickles these are actually really fun and this is another element that's not going to give too much dimension you can actually just kind of spread those on and give give a little shine to it. And again, I kept space for my return address and my to address. I know my stamp's going to go there. Now this uh, embellishment, the barcode should print right over that. That shouldn't be a problem. But take a little stickles and kind of accent those areas a little bit more. And some of these are really fun with the different shapes if they put them in there. So that's just another way to kind of add to your design overall. Just give it another element to really make it look cool. And you'll find when you go to the post office or your mail carrier, when they see these, they just, it brings a smile to their face. They just, they usually just love this stuff because most of the time they don't see it. They just see boring old envelopes and everything's always plain. So, you know, the more you can go in and uh, embellish these, the, the careful, more careful they will be with your cards. Um, so, you know, it's just another way to really take care of your cards and ensure that they get there in a nice uh, fast fashion. So not always do you have a card that is light in colors. So this one, I took a, a nice brayer and I, or I could use colored paper, a dark paper, but I actually brayed this with a nice black and it got a nice solid color. And then I stamped over that with a light, uh, I'd use the pumice stone on that as well to give it that nice design. But what I did is I took some mailing label stickers and I went in and I actually, uh, kind of embellished the sticker so I gave it some color to give it a little bit more dimension so it's not just a plain old sticker on there so I kind of removed that and I did some blending on that to give it just a little bit of color so it's not just a stark white on top of that black but that stands it out and it gives them so that the uh, postal workers can actually you know read your, your message and read your uh, 
addresses on there as well. Again, I left a spot for those postage. Uh, it, this, the black won't matter for them to cancel the stamp, so that isn't a problem. But what you may find is they may take and put a, uh, a white sticker with the barcode on there. So that's one unfortunate part of this is that since you can't barcode the over the black, they may do a, a, a little white sticker that'll come on there. Now, if you hand cancel that, they may not put that in there, but again, it may go still go through the machine. Kind of depends on your postal service. Um, but that is another really nice way to do an envelope, and I think that looks super sharp. You know, and you can take and you can match your card to your envelope. So if you have a really dark card, you know, that's got a lot of lace or, or however, and whatever embellishments you put on there, then you should make your envelope match that same style. Uh, I think that just adds a whole whole nother little look to it and, and really brings out the you know craft and art side of what you're doing. Uh, so it can be anything that you want really. Use your imagination. I thought these little gnomes were just super awesome and I thought well I would play with that and use those on there because how cool is that? That really looks sharp and on the front. Again, I left a spot for my to and from. Went through and colored those in. And now again, I use these tri-blend tri -blend markers. These just take all the guesswork out of all your blending for your colors. Uh, they really, I love to blend colors and use multiple layers on there. And this just does it perfectly for you. It gives you that depth and dimension when you're coloring. And again, make sure that you use an insert on there so with these markers as you can kind of see that this bled through and that saved my card from the other side because again if I had uh, used these markers on there without an insert on there you would see the bleed through from the, from behind on the marker so make sure that you use an insert Let's see that. Uh, did a little masking technique on there gave it a border behind there looks like this guy he's such a cool little guy and just played around with that round shape of your uh, blending tool. Just had some fun with that. So the possibilities are really endless. So just like your card making process, that uh, there's just all kinds of things you can do, all different ways you can present yourself and present your cards. That's just another way to really express your art and really express yourself and how you put things together. And it's just, I just, I find it so much fun. And, and it's just another way to show how special it is when you make a card and send it with love with a really fancy envelope as well. All right, thanks for watching and have a good day.